Joe Hopkins here, and uh, thought I'd do a little bit of storytelling, you know? Like they used to do back in the old days of TV, if anybody remembers that, they used to have something called television. And they'd have shows where sometimes you'd have some old-timey bastard uh, picking a guitar like this, is usually how it went, and they'd tell a story. So I thought I'd tell a little bit of an amusing story. Now anybody who's been watching this uh, channel for any length of time knows that my day job, I am a corrections officer. That basically means a prison guard. And once upon a long damn time ago, I was working at a medium security facility. If anybody you know, doesn't know what that is, it's basically where they send people that are bad, but not bad enough for the maximum security facility I work at now. And I worked with this fellow. Long time ago, his name was Oscar. And uh, you can guess we called him Oscar the Grouch because he was a little bit uh, grouchy, especially if he didn't get his uh, drink in, you know. He was a little bit of an alcoholic, just a little bit. Well, maybe more than a little bit. So Oscar, back way back then, used to work the towers. Now, you know, prisons have guard towers. It's this thing, it's like this tall uh, structure that you sit at the top of and watch to make sure nobody's escaping. And in this particular facility, we had a number of towers, and one of them, tower number four, uh, had no catwalk. That's that little walkway around the outside. That's important later in the story. There, no catwalk out there. Well, to get to the towers, you don't want uh, the entrance to the towers inside the facility, because then if there's a riot, the, you know, the facility's, uh, you know, the people living there, they don't always want to be there. They could take over the tower. So you get to it from the outside. So Oscar, he goes out with the other tower guys. You know, there's a number of towers. And they get in this van that takes them around the perimeter road to the tower. And Oscar would go to his car. Most people would. They'd get a book or one of those little mini TVs to watch because it's boring up there. Uh, you're supposed to be watching the perimeter, but you know, it is what it is. So Oscar, he'd go and get uh, a bottle. He'd get a nice little bottle and uh, stick it in his little bag and they'd take it up there to the tower and have a few drinks and then have a few more and then have a few more and then he'd watch the uh, yard because they'd all go out to the big yard where they'd lift weights and play soccer and basketball and stuff and then after the big yard he'd finish that bottle. So Oscar's up there and he's drinking and, and you know falls asleep because that happens sometimes if you drink enough you fall asleep and uh, he heard this kind of on the window. Kind of an odd sound to hear, especially since there's no catwalk, you know, there's, there's, you can't walk around the outside of the tower like the other ones. So he's wondering, uh, kind of coming out of that haze, hearing that, that wondering, uh, what in the world could that be? So he kind of is a little bit startled once he uh, wakes up enough to realize that that can't be. And he takes a look outside, looks out the window, and sees two big glowing eyes staring in at him. Well, that's not the kind of normal thing that a person would normally see, right? What are these big glowing eyes staring in at him? Now keep in mind, he's still pretty drunk. So I guess old Oscar had done some bad things in his life that he was feeling a little guilty about. And he thought to himself, oh my God, the devil has come for my soul. He thought it was the devil staring in at him out there, floating in the air, staring through the window at him. Why he thought the devil wouldn't take the stairs up, I don't know, but I mean, the door at the bottom's locked, but I think the devil could get through that. But anyway, the, there's two big guys staring at him. He thinks it's the devil. He freaks out and he grabs the telephone and dials the captain's number to inform them that the devil has come to take his soul. Not the kind of thing you really want to want to tell your shift commander. And uh, I guess at some point through that drunken haze, before they picked up, it occurred to him, shit, I don't think I can tell them that the devil has come for my soul. And he is there trying to come up with some other thing he can tell them. And uh, of course, in his alcoholic haze, the thing he comes up with at the very last second when they answer is that a UFO has landed behind the prison and the aliens are coming out of it. <laughs> Needless to say, the answer from the other side is, what? You wait there. 
We'll, we'll be around in a minute. Well, he hangs up the phone and uh, realizes he's kind of in trouble. Um, cause now the captain's coming around to inspect, obviously not believing there's a UFO, but thinking that something is wrong with old Oscar. Probably has an idea of what that something is. So they're driving, you know, he's waiting for that van to come around with the, uh, with the powers that be that are probably going to give him a, quite a bitchin' to. And uh, looks outside at them big glowing eyes and watches as the owl flies off the windowsill and away into the woods. So, you know, needless to say, from then on, Oscar did not work towers or any other firearms post ever again. There are guns in that tower. And for some reason, they just didn't trust him around guns anymore. So from then on, he worked the gatehouse where he got to uh, be right up front when people are going in and out and being definitely a grouchy bastard. Oscar the Grouch. Yes, because he had to be sober. You can't get a bottle into the gatehouse like you can into a tower. Because, you know, they check your bag going in there, right? Just whatever. You got to go inside the facility. So there you go. There's the story of when the UFO landed or didn't. It landed, I guess, behind the prison. Uh, it wasn't a UFO. It wasn't a devil either. And uh, that's, that's the tale. People laugh when I tell this story at my job. I thought maybe some of you would laugh at it, you know, when I tell it here. If you think it's funny, let me know in the comments. Subscribe to my channel and tell me if I should tell more stories. Because I have some funny ones. And uh, I love you guys. Peace out, baby. Bye-bye.